Hello, and welcome to another edition of Monday Night Mashup. I'm Andrea Esselman. And I'm Corey Drennan with your news update. Last Wednesday, love was in the air at the University of South Carolina. On the first of three snow days, students gathered in the Russell House Ballroom to watch The Dating Game, a Valentine's Day show sponsored by the Residence Hall Association and Freshman Council. The inspiration for the event came from a game show that ran in the 60s where a bachelor or bachelorette is matched with three contestants. The bachelor or bachelorette would ask three contestants questions and based on the responses, he or she would then choose one of the contestants to take out on a date. Freshman Council also provided candy for spectators and Valentine's Day prizes were raffled off throughout the show. Freshman Council members hope to organize more events like the dating game to help bring members of the student body together in the future. Ian Shannon, a member of the Freshman Council, spoke of making the dating game a tradition here at the University of South Carolina. This was put on two years ago and we thought it was a great idea back then and we just wanted to uh, reincarnate the idea and see if we can bring a tradition here to the University of South Carolina with the dating game. In addition to trying to make decisions regarding their dating life, students also have to bring about a huge decision made by the student body. Student government elections are running this week for the upcoming 2014 through 2015 school year. The voting period will run Tuesday and Wednesday, February 18th and 19th. Polls open at 9 a.m. Tuesday and close 5 p.m. Wednesday evening. Voting locations include the Business Administration Building Lobby, the Gambrell Library, the Coker Life Center's Lobby, the First Floor Information Desk of Russell House, and the Strom Thurmond Fitness Center Lobby. Up for election are the positions of Student Body President, Vice President, and Treasurer. Look for each candidate's platform in the Daily Gamecock and on our website at sgtv.sc.edu. After the break, Andrea Esselman will have your national coverage. Stay tuned. Welcome back to MNM. This is your look at the news nationwide. A Pennsylvania teen accused of killing a man she met on Craigslist told a local, local newspaper that she and her husband are guilty and killed more than 20 other men. 19-year-old Miranda Barber told the Daily Item of Sunbury, Pennsylvania that she would have spared the man's life if he had not said the wrong things. Barber had solicited the man for sex, and even after claiming that she was 16, the man wanted to continue. Barber claims that if he had told her he would not go through with the deal, he would have been freed. The duo has claimed participation in several slayings in Alaska, Texas, North Carolina, and California. Sunbury police are now in contact with investigators in the other states. The couple is a member of a satanic cult and committed the crimes as a way to do something together. Prosecutors are seeking the death penalty against both barbers. The Powerball Lottery has risen to an estimated $400 million for Wednesday's drawing. After no winning tickets were sold for Saturday's drawing, the jackpot jumped by roughly $70 million. If a winner is found this Wednesday, they will be the first jackpot winner of 2014. The last jackpot winner was declared on the Christmas Day drawing. The Powerball is played in 43 states, as well as D.C. and the U.S. Virgin Islands. The odds of winning this Wednesday is 1 in 175 million. Increases in the prize amounts have been contributed to the recent increase in ticket prices from $1 to $2, in addition to California joining the list of participating states. <clears throat> Police have found a 52-year-old woman alive in the woods six days after she disappeared. Sharon Ruth Bates went for a walk last Saturday and got stuck in a well. Due to the slippery conditions, she was unable to climb out. Bates had used a plastic bag in order to collect drinking water, but had grown weaker with each day that passed. Bates was found due to a tip by her sister about her favorite places to climb. She is currently recovering in the hospital. In other news, a Minneapolis man is now recovering in a hospital after a fire in, in, in his rental home. In the fire, Troy Lewis lost five of his seven children, aging 19 months to eight years. The widower was able to save his nine-year-old and five-year-old daughters. 
Lewis had to choose which children to save, but told the Minneapolis Star Tribune that he wanted to get all of his babies. Three children were declared on scene, while two others died at the hospital. Lewis and his remaining children are in critical condition at a local hospital. The duplex had no current, co current code violations, and the cause of the fire has still not been determined. An establishment named Dumb Starbucks sparked attention in the Las Feliz area of Los Angeles. The store resembles Starbucks with a green awning and the Starbucks logo, but with Dumb, the word Dumb added at before every item. All food and drink was free at Dumb Starbucks. Customers waited up to two and a half hours for free coffee. Starbucks issued a claim that they are not affiliated with Dumb Starbucks and were looking into the unauthorized use of their logo prior to the revealing of the intentions for the establishment. A letter in the window claimed that under law, the store was an art gallery, not a coffee shop. Canadian comedian Nathan Fielder revealed last Monday that he was behind the dumb Starbucks store. Fielder is host of Comedy Central's show, Nathan For You, and the hoax was a promotion for his upcoming season. Scientists in Galveston, Texas, grew a pair of human lungs in a lab using tissue from organ donors. The lab-manufactured lungs are a part of an effort to solve organ donor shortages. If the lungs are functional, they could help more than 1,600 people awaiting a lung transplant. Researcher Joan Nichols said that it will be another 12 years before the lungs are ready to be used in transplants. The tissue used to create the lungs comes from the lungs of two child organ donors that were too damaged to be used for transplants after a car accident. The engineer engineered lungs took about four weeks to develop. And the lab-made lungs look very similar to the real thing, but are pinker, softer, and less dense. Researchers hope to create other body parts, such as livers and kidneys, to use for transplants. That is all we have for you in national news. Corey Drennan will have a world report after this. Don't click away. This is your 90.5 seconds. This is your 90.5 seconds. This is your 90.5 seconds of the news. Today is September 3rd, September 16th, September 25th. It will be mostly cloudy, partly sunny, a 40% chance of showers and thunderstorms after 10 a.m. There are over 100 freshmen, over 10%. Only 82, more than 150 people were ejected from williams Bryce Stadium. South Carolina is celebrating the 50th anniversary of the school's desegregation. A USC student is charged with filing a false police report and false swearing. Tuesday night, the city council held a meeting to the public to discuss its controversial efforts to deal with Columbia's homeless. Harris Pastides will give his State of the University address tomorrow as he begins his sixth year as university president. The women's soccer team, the men's tennis team, the USC women's golf team, the men's soccer team, the women's equestrian team begins competition today as they take on Kansas State. A new movie is providing audience members with a different perspective of a popular British boy band. Read all about One Direction, This Is Us, as well as all of the full news and sports stories. Find exclusive videos and even more at DailyGameCock.com. Jeremy Urso, Jeremy Urso, Jeremy Urso, 90.5 seconds of the news. We are back on Monday Night Mashup with your world news update. 18 people are feared to be dead after a Nepal airplane crashed after making an unscheduled fuel stop in the city of Pokhara. Contact with the plane was lost, and the destination was Jumia. However, the plane crashed in a remote mountainous region of the Air Argakachi district. Due to the snow and fog, a rescue helicopter was unable to reach the area of the crash. Of the 15 passengers and three crew members, one was believed to be a Danish national, while the rest, including a child, were Nepalis. The cause of the crash is still unconfirmed. Emergency workers in the South Africa cleared a mine shaft entrance of debris, allowing miners who had been trapped in the ability to escape. Only 11 emerged, however, when more than 200 were reported trapped. Many of the workers remained underground due to the fear of being arrested, as they were illegal miners. The miners had been working illegally at the abandoned mine in order to acquire gold and platinum. This type of crime is very common in South Africa. Authorities believe that a rival organized crime group robbed the miners and blocked them in the mine. Illegal mining remains a serious concern but has declined due to the stakeholders in the mining industry. Agreeing to steal sh open shafts and to seek to detain illegal miners, it is unclear if and when the remaining miners will exit the shaft. 
anti-government de demonstrators ended their three-month occupation of Kiev City Hall last Sunday. The group had agreed to disperse in exchange for the release of all jailed protesters. Hundreds remained outside of the building as a threat to retake the City Hall. If the government fails to drop all criminal charges this past week, the last of the 234 jailed protesters were released under an amnesty that called for activists to vacate government buildings in Kiev and elsewhere. A new prime minister is expected to be nominated after Yatsenyuk turned down the position once again. Yatsenyuk turned down the position as he claimed he would not be bought with a post position from the president. Uganda's president vowed to sign a sweeping anti-gay legislation on what he said were scientific considerations. The bill contains the penalty of life prison for aggravated homosexuality, including acts involving a member infected with HIV, serial offenders, and sex with minors. The bill also includes prison time for anyone who consoles or reaches out to gays and lesbians. Museveni's claims um, that there is no scientific gene for homosexuality and that it is merely just abnormal behavior. Museveni originally declined to sign the bill as it contained death penalties. The first bill caused Britain and other European nations to th threaten the withdrawal of aid to Uganda, which relies on millions of dollars from the international community. It is unclear what the effect of the current bill will be on international relations. According to Amnesty International, homosexuality is illegal in 38 of 54 African countries. That concludes the world news. After the break, we will have Emily Fitzpatrick with the weather. Hello and welcome back to m and I'm Emily Fitzpatrick with your weekly weather update. Those who miss the age of disco will be in a good mood this week as temperatures reach into the 70s. Tomorrow it will be mostly sunny with a high around 70, but wear your raincoat if you're going out on Tuesday night because there's a slight chance of showers. Shakespeare once said, what's fair is foul and what's foul is fair, but Wednesday and Thursday's weather will be all fair with warm weather and some cloud coverage. If you forgot what a thunderstorm is like because of all the wintry weather, Friday will jog your memory as there is a 60% chance of thunderstorms. And sadly, the upcoming weekend will not be as pleasant as this past one because it will rain on Saturday and Sunday with temperatures dropping into the 60s. In other news, this past Friday an earthquake struck Edgefield, South Carolina at 10.23 p.m. and was felt throughout the state as well as, as, well as parts of Georgia and North Carolina. Edgefield is 60 miles outside Columbia and 20 miles from Augusta, Georgia. The earthquake had a 4.1 magnitude, but luckily did not cause any significant damage. This was the state's strongest earthquake since 2002, when a 4.4 magnitude earthquake hit Charleston on November 11th. After a short, a short commercial break, Danielle Barilla will bring us sports. Keep watching. Hello, and welcome back to Monday Night Mashup here on SGTV Campus Channel 4. My name is Danielle Barilla, and this is your weekly Gamecock Sports Update. The women's basketball team was on the road this past weekend facing the LSU Tigers in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. The fifth-ranked Lady Gamecocks came out on top with a final score of 73-57. The Gamecocks shot 48.9% from the field. This gives the team a seven-game winning streak, a, a conference record of 11-1, and an overall record of 23-2. The ladies will play on Thursday against the Kentucky Wildcats in Lexington before facing the Florida Gators at Colonial Life Arena next Sunday. We now move from women's to men's basketball, where the Gamecocks had a great week. After losing majority of their games this season, the men's basketball team has hit a winning streak. The Gamecocks defeated bo both Vanderbilt and the University of Alabama at home this past week. They defeated the Commodores 65 to 59 and the Crimson Tide 67 to 66. This improves the Gamecocks record to 3 and 9 in the conference and 10 and 15 overall. On Wednesday, they will face Arkansas on the road before returning to play the Georgia Bulldogs at Colonial Life Arena next Saturday. The softball team was on the road this past weekend in Boca Raton, Florida for the Florida Atlantic Strikeout Cancer Tournament. 
On Friday, the Lady Gamecocks defeated LIU Brooklyn 9-5 but went on to lose to Maryland 8-4. On Saturday, they sought revenge against Maryland and ended up defeating the Terrapins 8-2. Sunday, the ladies competed against the host of the tournament, Florida Atlantic, where they won 8-1. Before returning home next weekend for the Gamecock Invitational, the Lady Gamecocks will travel to UNC Charlotte to face the 49ers on Wednesday. It was opening weekend for Gamecock baseball. The baseball team had a great start to their season, already holding a record of three wins and no losses. Although the first game was postponed on Valentine's Day due to snow, that did not keep the Gamecocks from sweeping the first weekend of games against Bucknell. The team started with a doubleheader on Saturday where they won 17-4 and 12-2 respectively. On Sunday, the team shut out the Bucknell Bison 12-0. The boys will be back in action on Tuesday at 4 p.m. as they face Presbyterian College. The 32nd ranked South Carolina women's tennis team hosted in-state rival Clemson on Sunday at noon. The Gamecocks fell to the 13th ranked Tigers 5-2. It was the girls' first loss at home this season, leaving them with an overall record of 6-2. The Lady Gamecocks will host a doubleheader on Friday against South Carolina State and North Florida at 1 p.m. and 6.30 p.m. respectively. Although the women's tennis team has had a busy couple of weeks, we have not seen the men's tennis team in action since they lost to the North Carolina State Wolfpack 4-3. The men currently have an overall record of 5-4. The Gamecocks will be back in the swing of things hosting the USF Bulls this Friday at 4 p.m. Even though the snow has completely melted in Columbia and spring sports are in full swing, the Winter Olympics are still taking place on the other side of the world. The Americans have had a great week over in Sochi, Russia and are currently in second place for the medal count with five gold, four silver, and nine bronze medals. For the first time in 12 years, the Americans swept an event at the Winter Olympics, winning the gold, silver, and bronze medal in the first ever men's free ski slope style competition. Josh Christensen won the gold with Gus Kentworthy and Nick Gepper following closely behind winning the silver and bronze. This sweep is the third for the U.S. in Winter Olympic history. Americans are calling TJ Oshie a hero after he scored the winning goal in the shootout between the United States and Russian hockey teams. The final score of the game was 3-2. The U.S. hockey team went on to beat Slovenia yesterday 5-1. This win solidified the Americans as the number two seed going into the quarterfinal on Wednesday. The Canadians have also guaranteed their spot in the quarterfinals at the number three seed with Finland filling out the fourth seed. Canada will play against the winner of Latvia, Switzerland which is scheduled for tomorrow night. If both the United States and Canada win their quarterfinal games, they will face each other in the semifinals. Currently, Sweden holds the top spot going into the quarterfinal. And finally, for the first time in an Alpine Olympic event, two athletes shared the top spot on the podium. Tina Mays of Slovenia and Dominique Gissian of Switzerland both finished the women's downhill final in 41.57 seconds. Some people were hoping for a tiebreaker, but the event ended with both Olympians on the podium with gold medals. That's all we have for you in sports this evening. Remember to tune in next week for more Gamecock athletic news. Don't click away because there's more Monday Night Mashup right after this break. So did you guys um, hear we finally set up a Twitter account for did we now? The, news, the news show? So uh -huh. yes, all of our viewers go and follow at SGTV News 4. Um, the SGTV is capitalized, not that it really matters, but <laughs> capital S, capital G, capital T, capital V. Lowercase like news. Lowercase news. All and then case? the number four. Okay. Yes. <laughs> so <laughs> we need some followers. Okay. There <laughs> you go. We'll post some of our stories on there. We'll post upcoming events around the campus. Just go ahead and click follow. It's not that hard. We won't tweet. 
that obnoxiously, we promise. <laughs> and you can always unfollow us later, but please don't. All week long. Yes. Thank you so much for walking, watching this edition of Monday Night Mashup. Be sure to follow us on Twitter and uh, get your coverage throughout the week on our website. And have a great week.